What in the hell do you want? I'm looking for the Madam of Bourbon Street. Well, I'm Jackie Dunn, and most people know me as the Madam from Bourbon Street. Oh! Jackie Dunn. Who in the hell are you? Well, my name is Gene Tracy, and most people know me as Mr. Truck Stop. Shit, I've heard of you. You got the reputation for having the smallest Peter of any truck driver in the damn country. Well, that may be true, honey, but I'll tell you one damn thing. If you had it all in your mouth, you couldn't holler, take it out. Is that a way of putting that I got a little mouth and you got a big Peter? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying, uh, I've got an organ and uh, you ain't supposed to play it in the cathedral. You know what I mean? Well... Now that you're here, what in the hell do you want? Well, I want to get laid. That's why I'm here. Get laid? Well, I'm sorry, honey, but all the girls are wore out. They had a truck driver's convention last night, and they just fucked my girls to death. <laughs> sure enough. I'm the only one on duty. Oh, you son of a bitch. I don't want to go with you. Goddamn, you're too fat and ugly. You ugly son of a bitch. You ugly son of a bitch. You know that? You ugly. You taking a look in the mirror lately, you... <laughs> Let me tell you, you know, you so goddamn ugly, you what I call a two-sacker. What in the fuck do you mean by a two-sacker? Well, that means I gotta put a sack on my head, too, in case yours comes off. Uh, you phony bastard, you. Actually, folks, Dean Tracy and I are old friends, and our relationship goes way back. Ah, but Tracy's been good to me. Always sending me customers, you know. One time I told him, I said, Gene, you're from Oklahoma? He said, yeah. I said, you know, I said, that's close to Texas, ain't it? He said, you bet. I said, you know, Gene, I said, they always told me that them Texans are so damn big that they just throw it out and slowly walk towards you. <laughs> I sure in hell would like to have me one of them Texans. He said, I'll see what I can do for you. Sure enough, a week later, here come a truck driver by the name of Tex. He said, Tracy sent me. He said, you're looking for a Texan. I said, honey, step to me. Took him up there in my room. Got him. He had one of those great big belt buckles, you know. <laughs> I said to him, I said, well, honey, whip it out. <laughs> he said, whip it out. Hell, I can't even flip it out. <laughs> I said, you son of a bitch, you, do you know what that big belt buckle's for? He said, no. I said, that's a tombstone for that dead dick you're carrying around. <laughs> And, and G's always trying to hustle a buck. You know, he wants a sure bet. You know. I'll never forget the time the son of a bitch come down there to my whorehouse leading a horse. I said, I said, you motherfucker, you. I said, I don't do that act anymore. I said, what in the hell you need? He said, we're going to make all kinds of money. I said, how are we going to make any money? He said, well, I got a sure thing going. No way, no, way, no son of a bitch can win. He said, I'm going to put the bucket down here and put this money here and put this horse here. And he said, I got something going. We're going to make a lot of money. I looked at him. I said, well, look. I said, you can keep all the damn money you get. I said, if you can win any money with that horse and that bucket of money, I said, you can keep it. I said, matter of fact, I said, the only reason I'm letting you do this is because we're old friends. So I said, who in the hell are you going to bet with? He said, every fucking truck driver that comes along. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, a lot of truck drivers, I was, you know, very famous at that time and all these truck drivers couldn't wait to get to Jackie's whorehouse so anyhow he's got the horse sitting there in the damn bu bucket and one old guy from Arkansas comes in truck driver you know and he says to Tracy Tracy he's what in the fuck you doing with the horse and the bucket of money <laughs> Tracy said well he said we're having a contest this week he said what kind of contest he said well he said you see that horse and that bucket of money he said if you can Tell that horse something to make him laugh. He said, that bunny's yours. The old Arkansas fellow said, how much try it cost me to try? He said, $100. He said, shit, I'll just take you on. Dropped the $100 in there. 
reached over and whispered something in the horse's ear, and that son of a bitch just started laughing and laughing. <laughs> Big tears rolling down his eyes. Gene and Tracy over there crying like hell. You know. Truck driver reached down, got the money, and left. He said, well, Gene, I'll see you next week. I said, Gene, you know, he's, how the fuck am I going to get my money back? He said, well, I'll try it a different way. Puts another bucket of money down, same horse, same truck driver comes in. He said, well, Tracy, said, what kind of contest you running this week? He said, well, this week you don't have to make the son bitch laugh, just make him cry. <laughs> <laughs> and so the guy says, can I take him outside? He said, yeah, but you can't hit, beat him. He always said, I'm an animal lover, so I wouldn't touch him. So he goes outside five minutes to come back. Damn old horse just squalling in a ball. <laughs> Big tears running down his eyes. Yeah. Tracy said to him, he <laughs> reached down to get the money to start out. Tracy said, just a minute. He said, now look, he said, would you mind telling me what the hell you told that horse to make him laugh last week? He said, well, he said, shit. He said, I just reached over, whispered in his ear, told my dick was bigger than his. <laughs> And he said, that son of a bitch laugh like hell. <laughs> Tracy said, well, I guess you won that money fair and square. <laughs> he said, but would you mind telling me what the hell you told, done to him when you took him outside to make him cry? He said, I didn't do a thing to that son of a bitch. He said, I just showed it. <laughs> they got what you call out there a snatch wig. <laughs> and you pace that son of a bitch on down there, and them fuckers don't know whether they're seeing the woolly booger or the snatch wig. <laughs> yeah, now, I know it's not nice to cheat fellas like that. <laughs> But man, I was glad to get out there because grass don't grow on a racetrack and this fucker was wore out a long time ago. <laughs> I went in that there wig shop and I said to that fella, I said, I'll have one of them there snatch wigs. You know, they had one my color, black and gray, they just didn't have one big enough. <laughs> yeah, they're making a lot of money with them damn things out there. Where are you from, honey? Yeah, really? Big fucking deal. A tourist. <laughs> How in the hell did you make it all the way over here? <laughs> well, honey, you should get a truckload or, or borrow that Gene Tracy's truck or get him to bring you a whole goddamn truckload of them snatch wigs back from North Dakota because you could make a million with them. Out there, one guy went in, he wanted a dozen of them. The gal says, how do you want them wrapped all together individually? He said, wrapped hell. Just give them to me. I'll eat them right here. I'm still practicing. <laughs> and I can tell by all the folks in from some of the fellows from Charlotte, North Carolina, that these fuckers could stand a little practicing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, anyhow, next time I seen Gene, here he come with another guy, you know. Tall, good-looking son of a bitch, you know. I took one look at him, I said, hello there, baby, where are you from? He said, oh, I'm from Texas. I said, oh, yeah? I said, what part? He says, cut and shoot. I said, honey, I don't know about the shooting, but I'm interested in the cutting. <laughs> I said, is it true that everything from Texas is bigger and better? He said, yep. I said, are the men bigger and better? He said, that's right. I said, all over. He said, you bet. I said, shit, I'm going to try this again. <laughs> of course, I'm no damn fool. I know I don't look good to anybody unless they're drunk. <laughs> all you fuckers, hurry up and get drunk in here. <laughs> Got him up to my room. Mixed him a drink. Went in and I took a shower, you know, and perfumed and powdered all over. <laughs> I had to put a whole lot of powder on this big box. You know. <laughs> Got on a sexy black negligee. Oh. Come sashaying through that old Texan's room. <laughs> About that time, he's ready for a drink. Mixed him a drink. 
sat on the edge of the bed. The next thing you know, my big ass was in the bed. <laughs> the next thing you know, that old Texan was on top. <laughs> Hit it two licks. <laughs> Stopped deader than a doornail. <laughs> Looked me right in the balls of the eyes. Yeah. And he says to me, he said, pardon me, ma'am, what part of Texas you from? <laughs> I said, you fucker, you, I ain't from Texas. He said, well, that pussy sure is. <laughs> Next day, I saw Gene. Gene says, well, what happened? And I told him what happened. I said, you know, when that son of a bitch told me about pussy was from Texas, I ain't, I ain't figured out yet whether he meant was bigger or better. <laughs> Gene said, Jack, he said, that pussy ain't from Texas. Why didn't you tell that son of a bitch was from Colorado, the Grand Canyon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's always giving me nice compliments like that. Oh, hey, and some of the material Gene tells. You know, you often wonder where that son of a bitch gets so much material. Actually, some of the things really happens to it. For instance, I'll never forget I had me a real high-class whorehouse by this time, you know. One of them real swanky, expensive things. Fifty dollars just to get in the damn door, you know. So old Dean brought this fella down there with him his first time down in New Orleans. And uh, he's a country boy. He's from where are you from, honey? Where are you from? Concord. Concord. That's where this fucker was from. <laughs> Concord, North Carolina. Right on. So <laughs> Gene Tracy, he had him working on the truck, his first run down there. And he said, now look, he says, I'm going over here and unload the truck. He says, I'll tell you what. He says, you go down there to Jackie's whorehouse, the Madam of Bourbon Street, and tell her you're a friend of mine. Get any fucking thing you want down there. <laughs> so this old boy from Concord, North Carolina, comes up and raps the, and rings the doorbell. And I open the door and he says, he says, is this Jackie Dunn's, uh, the Madam of Bourbon Street's whorehouse? I said, yes, it is. He said, well, is this where you learn about sex at? I said, honey, I don't know about learning about it, but this is where you get it at. I said, now, come on in. I said, you understand, it's Mardi Gras day and we're very busy. How do you want it? Straight, half and half, 69, a trip around the world. <laughs> he looked at me, he said, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> he said, you see, this is my first time out of Concord, North Carolina. He said, actually, I've never been to bed with a gal before. <laughs> He said, maybe a half or two back there in North Carolina. <laughs> but he said, being an old country fellow from North Carolina, he said, I'd like to try a lot for my money. He said, I just think I'll try that 69 times. I think I can go. Right on. And I figured, here is a shit stomper, you know. <laughs> so I said, okay, second door to the right. So he gets over there, and I sit, and they get all undressed, you know. Of course, that old dick stacking straight up there, you know. <laughs> Little old gal went running in there, got her clothes off, got in bed, stuck her ass right in his face. He said, hold it right there. <laughs> he said, this ain't the way the heifers do it back in Concord. <laughs> she said, damn you, I ain't a heifer. <laughs> You get what you ask for, and you have five minutes to get it in. Woo. Now she said, make like it's an ice cream cone. Lick it one time. He said, that's the first time I ever seen a bearded ice cream cone. <laughs> 
So he's licking away. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, she gets a little pain in her stomach, and she has to pass a little gas. Oh That's yeah. farts, you know. Right on. So she let out a little tootie. One of them sneakers. He said, hold it right there, lady. He said, damn it. She said, look, she said, you only got one minute left now. Let's get this over with. So he's going to town. All of a sudden, she let out a whopper. <laughs> he said, damn it, you almost blowed my brains out. He's not. <laughs> he said, now look here, lady. He said, I know you're a nice lady to teach me all about this here sex stuff. But he said, I swear, I couldn't take 69 more of them fucking things. <laughs> yeah. Well, about that time, old Tracy comes by, you know. The boy from Concord, North Carolina, come down, he wanted his money back. And I'm arguing with him. I said, honey, we don't give no money back here. When you're hard, you're soft. And when you're soft, you're hard. <laughs> I said, there's a fucking door. Don't let it hit you in the ass. <laughs> so he's starting to go out, and Gene Tracy coming in. Gene says, well, how was it? He says, shit. He said, you don't want to come in here. He said, all these girls do is fart in your face and take your money. <laughs> he said, I'd rather fuck the heifers back in Concord, <laughs> Concord North Carolina. <laughs> On farm. Yeah. So <laughs> Tracy said, well, you stupid son of a bitch, you. So he said, sit down over there in that other potter and wait for me. So I said, Dean, goddamn, you're looking good. He said, yeah, and you're doing pretty good, too, with this high-class whorehouse you got. He said, we both finally got in the big time. I said, well, honey, how, how, how do you want it this time? I said, it's on the house this time. He said, look, Jack, he said, I want to tell you something. He, I said, you want a straight half and half, six and nine, a trip around the world? He said, shit, I've had all that. I said, well, how do you want it? I said, he said, I want something unusual and bizarre. I said, well, it just so happens that we got the Mardi Gras special. <laughs> he said, and how much is that? <clears throat> I said, $100. Old Tracy liked to shit in his britches right there. <laughs> yeah. But being a fellow like him and having had everything, he figured this Mardi Gras special must be something way out. And he don't like to miss out on nothing. So he whipped out the $100. He says, where do I go? I was upstairs on the third floor. So gets up there and he gets undressed and the old gal comes in, you know, and she <laughs> He says, what in the hell are you doing? She says, well, I'm the Mardi Gras special. She says, my name is Hurricane Annie and that's the tropical winds. Oh, yeah. This is how he got that fucking story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, look, he said, I ain't like that ignorant bastard from Concord, North Carolina. <laughs> he said, I want my money's worth. Now, he said, get your damn clothes off, get in this bed and start blowing on the right thing. Oh, yeah. So she got undressed, you know, and got her bra off, you know, and big old tits hanging down there. And she's like this to Dean. She's just <laughs> hitting him in the face, you know, slapped him with one tit and one side to the other. He said, what in the hell are you doing now? She said, damn you, I told you I'm Hurricane in. It has the tropical winds. Just knock two coconuts down. <laughs> he said, get your fucking drawers off and get in this bed now. So she got her pants off, got in the bed, and straddled them like this. You know. He said, what in the hell are you doing now? She said, god damn you, this is the last time I'm telling you. I'm the Mardi Gras special, Hurricane Annie. That was the tropical winds, just knocked two coconuts down. She started pissing and she said, here comes the tropical rain. <laughs> yeah. No, Gene Tracy, you know, he says, look, he said, you just get the hell off of me right now. Got up and got his clothes on. She said, Gene, you got about three minutes left. He says, that's all right. She says, where are you going? He says, oh, who the hell can fuck in this kind of weather anyhow?
Oh, you see, you see that that really uh, happened to him. <laughs> you may not believe this to look at me, but do you know that a lot of clubs I work in, I work with them go go girls and them strippers, and they do their thing and I do my thing, and guess who they call back for on course? <laughs> Would you like to take a guess? Who, who would you say? A <clears throat> young, beautiful girl or, or an old bag like me? Who, who would you say they'd call back for the encore? Yeah, Robert Taylor. Say something quick, you fucker. We ain't got much tape left. <laughs> Definitely you, Mom. You fucking A. Because when you're young and beautiful, when you're young and beautiful, you take your clothes off, shake your ass once or twice, it all looks alike. <laughs> but would you believe to come out here, do a split over a watermelon and make the watermelon disappear? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then for my second encore, I come back out and spit out the watermelon seeds. For the third encore, I do navel spins over a beer bottle, and that ain't easy either. Oh, yeah. And I always ask the folks, I say, now, look, please don't call me back for any more than three encores, because I don't know any more tricks. <laughs> but do get drunk, because the drunker you get, the better I look. Oh, yeah. You don't believe that, do you? Yeah, I'm right at you. Well, I'll have you know, the last night some old fucker was sitting right there where you're sitting at, I got through doing my show, he said, hey, mama, come on over here. I truck trying on over there. I said, what do you want, Daddy? He said, I'd like to take you home after the show. I said, fuck you after the show, let's go right now. Wasn't taking any chance on losing that sucker. Got me out there in the park. You know, first of all, he, he, I, he said, I said, how are we going to go? He said, well, never mind, come on out here. Got me out there in the parking lot and he had one of them great big old trucks called a Peterbilt. I thought that was some fucking thing that you build a Peter any way you wanted it. You know. Opened up the door and his buddy's up there just a fucking away in the bunk, you know. I said, what are we going to do now? He said, never mind, I'll go borrow a car. Come back with a little bitty Volkswagen. You know, one of them little bitty midget cars. Got my big fat ass in it. Took me out there to the park. And the positions he had me in, he lost the gear shift and damn near lost the car. Oh, yeah. Then he got my big fat ass on the bench. Hit it two licks, the bench broke down. <laughs> well, there we were, in the park, in the dark, in the grass. Finally, he says to me, I wish I had a flashlight so I could see what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I says, me too, you ignorant son of a bitch. You've been eating grass for the past 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, I'd like to tell one more story here before we bring this here to a close. You know, like I said earlier, Gene Tracy always tells jokes about truck drivers. And my favorite truck driver story was this here fellow had been out on the road for about three weeks, you know. And he come home and his little old wife had hot box, you know, hot to trot. Wanted to get it on right now. And this fucker had been out for about three weeks and probably stopped at every whorehouse and massage parlor on the way was wore out, you know. So he, he come in there, you know, and he sat down. And he's all tired, you know, and she grabs a hold of his old tally whacker and shakes it once or twice, you know. She says, honey, let's get it on. He said, mama, he said, God damn it. He said, I've been working hard for three weeks. He said, just let me get a little rest. She said, oh, no, honey. She said, I got to have it now. Start stroking that old tally whacker, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. So finally he said, oh, shit. He said, I ain't going to get any damn rest. He said, I might as well take you back here and throw one into you. <laughs> he said, well, shit, come on. He said, let's go back here and make us some little truck drivers. <laughs> got back there, you know, and she hurry up and jumped in the bed, and he got undressed, tired as hell, you know. Finally got his old dick up there and <laughs> rammed it in. She said, ah! He said, what in the hell is wrong with you? She said, you son of a bitch, you got it in the wrong hole, you got it in my ass hole. She said, you got it in my ass hole. He said, that's okay. He said, well, just make us a little, a little dispatcher while we're at it. Damn there, 
<laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you've been a great audience tonight. And uh, this is the first time, like Gene told you, that I've ever made a tape. And I have worked a lot of places. And of course, it, it's been a pleasure, and I consider it an honor for me to have had the privilege to work with the one and only Mr. Truck Stop himself, and here in his own home base in Charlotte, North Carolina. You know, folks, I'm smart enough to know that an entertainer is only as good as the audience. Come on! Yeah! yeah. And I'd like to say, I want to thank you very much for making me great tonight on this first tape of mine. Thank you, folks. I love you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, I want to thank you very much and all those of you that have bought this tape. If you like it, tell your friends and neighbors. If you didn't let them buy it, get fucked the same way you did. <laughs> <laughs> 